Hey people, if you're new here, I'm NJ, and today I want us to talk about reckless journalism and how dangerous it is, considering our country's history. This past weekend, the online news publication The South African ran a story titled COVID Corruption Has Roots in Apartheid, Rafa Poza on ANC Looting, written by Tom Head. It starts off by saying, and I quote, Silver Ramaphosa says that the wave of COVID corruption has roots in the apartheid regime in a letter to fellow ANC members on Sunday. End quote. The problem is, he never said this. He literally never used the phrase has roots in the entire open letter, even though this was presented as a direct quote in both the headline and the article. In this world of racial tensions and fake news, we, the public, are the truth barometer, and it's up to us to gauge the truth. But we need the actual facts to do this. And this article denied us those facts. So on Sunday, President Cyril Ramaphosa penned a six-page open letter to members of the African National Congress, in which he took them to task for the corruption plaguing the party and the government in general. He called them out, saying that the apartheid regime was rife with corruption, but so is the ANC, and they need to own this. Now, let me just clear something up here quickly. There is not much that I agree on with our president of late. In fact, I feel that the high hopes we had for his presidency in the beginning have been well and truly dashed. But on this, he is not wrong. The main difference between the apartheid days and the present era is that the corruption wasn't as widely reported on by the media of the time because of the repercussions related to doing so. Oh, and other reasons, of course. Mr. Head's cherry picking of the parts he felt would enrage white South Africans is shameful. This is what he quoted from the open letter Apartheid was both morally and materially corrupt. Even as its laws enabled the theft of resources belonging to the African people, there were many in the administration, including state companies and businesses, who flouted those corrupt laws to enrich themselves. However, this is what was actually said. Apartheid was both morally and materially corrupt. Even as its laws enabled the theft of resources that rightfully belonged to the people of South Africa, there were many in the administration, in state companies, in Bantu stands, and in business who flouted even those corrupt laws to enrich themselves. By not only paraphrasing the president's words, for example, substituting the African people for the people of South Africa, which changes the context entirely, but also leaving out entire portions like the mention of Bantu stands, which were black run homelands. He completely misrepresented what the president actually said. This is shocking, reckless, and divisive journalism at its very core, designed to inflame racial tensions and divide the people of this country. Naturally, this article, from a publication that I actually respect, was shared by white South Africans, with the general consensus being, see, it was only a matter of time until this happened. I'm surprised they haven't tried to blame apartheid for the virus itself. Don't get me wrong. There are many in the ANC who do try and pin their shortcomings on apartheid. And I will be the first one to call them out on this. But that is not what happened here. There are tons of examples that people like Mr. Head can use to pu push this agenda, if they feel they absolutely have to. There's a post doing the rounds on Facebook, and has been doing the rounds for a while in one form or another, calling on the president to provide an update on no fewer than 205 claims of corruption linked to the ANC. Sidebar. Unfortunately, I was unable to find the original post to cite this here. But I have reposted the content of that post on the Dear Mr. President Facebook page. I've linked to that in the description. It's a long read but it sums up the true extent of the corruption the president took his party to task for. Also, if you are the original author and would like us to credit you, please get hold of us in the comments. End sidebar. To 
intentionally misquote the president when he is actually trying to get the ball rolling on cleaning up the ANC and government in general, which will benefit all of us, is foolish and shameful. This article is a prime example of how the media loves the word apartheid. It's a great trigger word to pit the different races in South Africa against each other because it sells more newspapers and it gets more clicks. This was exactly that. It was bad reporting intended to incite the precise reaction seen on social media. Mr. Head and the South Africans succeeded in getting the advertising revenue that the angry visits to the site generated. That was their goal. Good, responsible journalism clearly was not. I'm calling out Tom Head and the South African on this pathetic excuse for journalism. You owe the President and the people of South Africa a formal apology. If it is not forthcoming within the week, I will be taking this matter up with the Press Council Ombudsman because you should be ashamed of yourselves. Normally I end my videos with, anyway, it's just my take on the matter, use it, don't use it. But not this time. This is me calling out injustice and demanding a response.